Hey guys, this is Don with Crag Axe Armory. So I've been talking to several of you guys at the 405th forums as well as on Facebook about the projects I got going. Uh, so anyways, I'm doing a Noble 6 armor suit, the whole thing. Started off with the assault rifle as building, an actual functioning assault rifle, and from there, of course, I gotta have a suit of armor to go with it. And being a former medieval reenactment armor, I got all sorts of tools, so I had these great ideas. I was gonna do it out of aluminum since that really has the best look and sound. Metal has a neat sound when you got an armor suit walking around in it. And to kind of match the titanium alloy, you know, the, the halo armor, I wanted to go with aluminum, but I had some problems. <laughs> so I was using 6061 aircraft aluminum, which is a specific alloy, moves great once. <laughs> I screwed up the front contours, was trying to fix it, and it just, quickly became a nightmare and starts cracking out on you. The amount of work just to get some single creases. Uh, yeah, I managed to get several pieces kind of fit together, but then I got to go in and do some riveting, do some hidden riveting, and it was just, you know, it took me about four hours just to get this much done. So you know what? Screw it. So not doing aluminum anymore. For the helmet, I'm going to use steel. It's going to be mostly 16 gauge steel. Yes, it's going to weigh a little bit, uh, most of my medieval helmets come out for combat helms anywhere from seven to ten pounds on a heavy stainless one. So I'm expecting to come in between five and six on the 16 gauge Noble 6 helmet. So I have tons of sheet metal. This is 16 gauge. It's in pretty old condition. <laughs> so I'm going to go through when I do this. I'm going to be doing a lot of how-to videos showing you how to clean this stuff up, how to do the patterns. I've worked out various patterns for the helmet that's obviously the top piece you know done in a 3d paper mock-up and flattened out for 2d uh, this is going to be the cheek sections so you can see how it's spliced together good thing is i can weld uh, steel i can't weld aluminum here don't have the equipment so i can weld from the back side fill in from the front so it'll be a nice really seamless smooth looking helmet when i'm done uh, got lots of pictures i got off etsy and a bunch of you you digital guys you know, I have it broken down into different sections of the helmet so I can break it up in individual components. And again, for the rest of the armor, I will be using aluminum still. So I took my my little Halo Noble 6 dude my son and I, my son helped me with, and I blew up all the individual components so I know exactly where to splice it, where to cut it, how to fit it together. This is 080 thick aluminum. I'm actually going to order some 063 1 16th inch. It's going to move a little bit better. Going to be able to put some more detail in it. And it's going to be cheaper too. <laughs> now, but anyways, this is what I have on hand. Since originally this is going to be for a helmet. And that's not the case anymore. So now I can cut this up and use it on other stuff. Uh, so I got a variety of tools I use. Underneath all the extension cords here. Hidden away. See a Beverly B1 shear. I can cut up to 12 gauge stainless if I use a cheater bar over the handle. Uh, 16 gauge aluminum, no problem. Basically, you just pull the handle and it slices it like a pair of scissors. Looks like a big kind of clunky piece of equipment, but you can actually cut a circle about the diameter of a quarter on there with this device. So, really handy for sheet metal work. Once I get the basic contours cut, then I use my medieval. 3D printer right here. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's got all sorts of different depressions. Uh, this stump is actually close to 30 years old. It's now splitting in half, so I really need to make a new one. Uh, I accidentally hammered my chiseling stake in there, and now it seems to be at one, so I think I'm going to have to break the sidewall out of my stump anyways to fix that. But anyways, that's a 12-pound shot put welded to a railroad spike. You know, here's some other... I think that was at one point a Civil War cannonball. <laughs> and then here's some other small steel balls that I buy and I just weld them to stakes and stuff. Plus, I have two dozen various curvature hammers. Uh, so anyways, I can put about just about any form I need to in metal. Plus I have hundreds of pounds of other shaped pieces of metal. So from there, walk on back. If I need a particular tool, I got an anvil, a forge, and all sorts of other tooling to make what I need. Got a milling machine. So a lot of what I'm going to be doing is I'll get the basic, I'll get the basic shape done in sheet metal. And then I come back with some thicker aluminum, which I don't see laying around. <laughs> come back with some thicker aluminum 
and actually mill in all the fancy shapes and curves like on the front pieces of the shins, some of the upper sections on the shoulders and such, or the forearm pieces like that, that even if you watch the video trailers, it shows the armor coming together. Even the video game shows it being done in different segments, so it should get the right look to it. Plus, it's much easier to mill something into a hunk, rivet it down, than it is to try and shape a piece of aluminum. Got a metal lathe. My big knife, my big knife making grinder, so if I'm debraining edges, I need cool contours put on. I have all sorts of fittings and attachments to get different shape curvatures on the different metals. And if I decide I want to do some chrome molly heat treated portions, which I may do. Now you look at the main armor parts, a lot of people use soft fabric for the between things. If you actually blow the pictures up in a video game of the guys, you'll see they're actually using rigid attachment between the different pieces. That's where my 30 years of armoring come in, into play. That I'm going to actually use medieval techniques which match pretty well with the halo armor uh, to get a lot of bending and fluid motion using rigid parts. But anyways, I got a big industrial heat treat oven stacked with all the flammable stuff on top of it back there, of course. <laughs> so, uh, I can dust that off and do some, you know, uh, actual heat treated armor made out of heat treatable steel alloys so I can get really thin, lightweight components to get really nice curvature and stuff and heat treat them so they're very strong and resilient. That's one anyways, that's the, that's the nickel and dime tour. So as I start getting all these pieces and stuff done, I'm actually gonna start this week and I'll be in town and it's pretty good weather rather than be back in the 90s here in Houston, about 100% humidity. But anyways, I'll be back on that. So I'll be posting lots of little segment videos on different parts. I'm gonna start from both ends. I'm gonna start doing the face parts and cheek, piece out of, cheek pieces out of the steel and helmet. I'm going to go back and I'm going to start at the ankles up and start doing the shins and knee sections out of aluminum. So I'm going to kind of go from both ends. The last part I'm going to tackle is going to be the chest. I haven't quite mapped that one out yet on how to do that. <laughs> I got some ideas though. Uh, anyways, hope you enjoy the videos and stuff I'll be posting. And I'm looking forward to uh, keeping everybody up to date on, on how I progress on this. Take care, man.